Good morning to all of you, brethren. Wow, you all look awesome. Always. Salamat po sa inyong pagdating ngayon, the third day of our festival is indeed a celebration of our communion with God and with each other. Thank you so much for making this a special time of the year where you can, you know, just drop off everything that you do just to be able to, to be here. This is about, not only about family, but it's about our communion, a deep relationship with our God, our Father, we can worship together, we can commune, uh, together with Him, and we can enjoy each other's company. Salamat po. Uh, dito po sa ating portion na to, uh, I would like to update you with some of the things that are happening in our church here in the Philippines and in the Northeast Asian region. Um, uh, last July po, last uh, July, I attended a conference in the United States. We do that yearly. Uh, and part of the conference, we have our mission developers meetings where we get to update each other on what the Lord is doing in the individual regions. And one of them is the Philippines and the Northeast Asian region. And uh, as we used to do in the past, uh, aside from just reporting verbally, uh, we tried with the help of our uh, brethren here who have uh, uh, technical skills, ability to put together some of those videos and pictures so that in those pictures we can give them a sample. This, uh, note that a sample. We cannot include everything but this will be a representation of what God is doing here in the Philippines. So I would like to share that with you as well. Uh, just putting it in context that this was given uh, as part of the report in the United States for that meeting. But I'm sure that you'll be able to relate to that because this is not about us, it's about God working in us and through us. And what a joy it is that He has given us that amazing privilege in GCI to participate in His work. Masaya po ako ngayon. I mean, masaya po ako araw-araw. Pero I have something that makes this day special to me. Because God made it. And because there's some family I haven't seen for a long time, but uh, it's been a part of my life. Sila Kwese, the Duban family are here with us. No phone. Nung po nakita ko siya nung, is it yesterday? Um, pinuntahan ko po siya, sabi ko, Sir, magandang gabi po at uh, po yung talaga nagtutuwa. Uh, because uh, Mr. Jose Raduban has been my, my pastor then. And when I was ordained and uh, I became part of the full-time ministry, he was my, my boss. He was my senior pastor and then I served in Quezon City Church at that time, 1990, 91, 92, around that time. And uh, there are so many nearing thoughts about him, I tell you. That's why I am so special for this day. Because I have a lot of experience We went to the streets of Metro Manila together, to his Lancer, and uh, during those times, there was no traffic. Uh, but we spent those times meaningfully in the way that we dialogued about uh, where God is leading us and the things that uh, concern the church and how can we help the brethren and all of those things. One of the things that I really admired about him was his passion. Pagkapun ng council niya, kahit na po sa oras, kalahating oras, isang, you know, isang tao lang, you cannot see him being exhausted and being involved. Kaya kahit po nandun ako, nakaupo ko sa tabi, I mean, there's a table here, and then you're like a and then you're like a table. You cannot help but listen. Because somewhere, he will ask, What is Eugene? What is your name? You can't even hear it because he will involve you. And I, I really appreciate that. And uh, his way of uh, remembering people's names. Ayo, you know, you're like a family. And uh, during that short time, I was with him uh, yesterday. He he met Gali and Rachel and said, "Oi, Gali, who's that? See, see Henry. You know, the the name of the person is like music to the ears. Makes you feel special because you know people care to 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 remember who you are, even the details of your life. 
Kaya, salamat po sir, uh, Mr. Duban, Jenny, for being with us here. Of course, the whole the Duban family, you are very much a part of this life. And this is a celebration of our relationship for a long time. Kahapon po si Pastor Hill, napakaganda po yung mensahe niya. Sa so, po sa mga illustrations niya, yung 3-in-1. 3-in-1, yung kopi ko, paborito ko po yun eh. Yun po ang hinirap ko. Alam po may asukal kasi yun eh. Uh, so what I do, palahati lang po hindi nung po kasi medyo mataas yung blood sugar ko. But I really enjoy that coffee. But we also have 3-in-1 now, we have the presentation and the video. I have, uh, I will be sharing the message today and at the same time we will have communion. So three in one po ito. Magkakasama uh, po ito. Eh? During the feast we, we explore ways of uh, uh, making time uh, really special for all of us. And uh, there are so many things that we'd like to incorporate. This is one of the ways by which we can put these elements together to give us an experiential aspect of uh, you know, the festival. It's not just about what you hear, what you learn, but how you relate with other people and you can integrate the elements so that, my, this, this festival is really a special one. So, these are the things that you can expect. That explains the reason why we have some of the elements in front of us. The theme of our festival is forward together in God's mission. And even Dr. Picard said that it's a grand vision. Forward means while we value the past, we look forward to our future in God's hands. We value the future. And with God who is providing us with everything for life and righteousness, well, this is something that we, we look forward to eagerly. Forward means we cannot stand still. We've been in the church for 50 years. What's yet ahead of us? We cannot stand still. We have to move forward. With that orientation, it's no longer the question which some of you may have asked yourself. Where in the world is God leading us? Or where in the world are we headed? Saan pa tayo papunta? Pag-insan yung pong tono, meron pa konting, alam nyo na, sometimes the meaning of the words change by the way that you say it. Saan ba tayo pupunta? Yung mga ganun, no? So it's no longer that question, but rather, brethren, where is God leading us to be in His world? That is more important to us. We have learned about the meaning of our theme, text the Rex. Uh, for uh, pounding on that and have been inspired with the symbols of baptism and communion, what they mean as part of our participation with God. Those are important as we move on, brethren. So today, today I'd like to share something that will connect or relate more with our future. So the title of my message is GCI Cultivating a more inclusive culture. Towards a more inclusive culture. Whether we like it or not, everybody belongs to a culture. In fact, several cultures, subcultures. We cannot deny that. If someone asks you to describe yourself, you begin to mention your name. And to include your family name, where you work, what you enjoy, what kind of food you eat, what kind of dress are you associated with. And during my, my trip to the U.S., I was going through immigration and uh, of course there were plenty of people and in order to systematize things, the, the people who are residents of the United States are going to uh, fall in line into several counters, but for visitors, those who are not Americans, or Canadians for that matter, they will have to fall in line to different counters. So it was my turn. It was my turn uh, during that uh, uh, queue when the, the officer, when the immigration officer saw me, he was trying to direct the traffic of the, the, in, in the, um, the visitors. He said, you, Korean, 
you fallen down there. So I wasn't wearing barong. <laughs> so most likely if I was, then we said, you Filipino, you, you fall in line with this. Because this says a little more about who I am, the country that I represent. So those are the things that we cannot escape. A culture is synonymous to philosophy, to ethos, to the things that you value, the, the things that you enjoy, that describes you, how you eat, what you sing, customs and traditions, way of life. And we have symbols for that. We have the national flag, we have things like this, and all of those symbols which will help us to, to identify us of what culture we belong to. Kaya nga po uso, kahit na po nagtatrabaho tayo sa mga kumpanya, uh, may uniform eh, di ba ba? And then the uniform, there is the logo. And that is where I belong. Dito nila linalagay yun. Usually, hindi dito, hindi dito. Either dito o dito. Sabihin, dito nang gagaling. <laughs> yung harap, yung pang araw-araw mong kabuhayan. Uh, one of those is uh, Cebu Pacific. Cebu Pacific, uh, di ba, Cebu Pacific, underdog po yan, tagal na pong, uh, you know, there was a time when Philippine Airlines was the airline in the Philippines. But that has changed. Cebu Pacific, yes, it's a budget airline, but its slogan says a lot about it. It's time. Every one flies. It's time. Every one. It's not everyone, every one flies. And you know, because of that, it struck a chord into the people's sensitivities, their aspirations, and it transformed the definition of flying. It's not just for the few. It's not just for those who are privileged, those who have money, but it's for everybody. It's time, everyone. I mean, I can fly that addresses deep-seated aspirations of people. And for that, it became the largest airline in the Philippines. Yesterday, I was fine-tuning the message. I got to read uh, a portion of the news that they, aside from Dubai, which they are inaugurating in October, they will also be uh, flying to Europe and the United States soon, even before the end of the year, maybe November. They inaugurated their brand new Airbus 300, 330, something like that. So, I mean, I admire people or organizations like that. Uh, they have something that uh, can address people's needs. Now, Cebu Pacific is a poor illustration. I would say a poor illustration as compared to God's vision, to God's design. What is that? It's time that God, all people, will feel that they are accepted, that they are loved, that they are included in the life of God. That's Cebu Pacific is nothing is compared to that. So, if that is true, brethren, if this is the God that we worship, and we have been blessed about this relationship with Him, what kind of church will be able to express that? What kind of church will resonate that kind of value? And I believe that it's going to be a church that has a culture of the inclusive love and grace of God. That is going to match. Swak po yun sa kung yun po ang pagustuhan ng God. It's going to be a culture that's a culture of grace Inclusiveness, it's going to be a culture where people will be, have open access to God and to each other, regardless of their circumstances in life, regardless of their race, regardless of their uh, social um, standing in the community. People will notice and feel that if, when they get in touch with, them, with us personally and as a church, they will say, Oh my, I feel accepted here. I feel loved here. I want to belong. I can live here. Gusto po ng Panginoon na lang. Lahat po ng tao marandaman niya kung sino siya, kung gaano kalaki ang pag-ibig niya para sa lahat ng tao. So, 
Where will that lead us? This culture of inclusion, what drives it, brethren? And I believe, brethren, this is the value. In the slide, you will see, because God loves everyone, we in GCI, we in the church, should not exclude anyone. Can we repeat that, brethren? Because God loves everyone, we in the church should not exclude anyone. Because God loves everybody, we should not make it difficult for others to draw near to God. Bakit? Mayroon ba talaga yun? Some will ask. Hindi ba dapat madali yan? Well, even the scripture will show that it is possible for people to make it difficult for other people to get to God. Now, in the last conference that we attended in the United States, we were reminded once again of the vision of GCI. All kinds of churches, for all kinds of people, in all kinds of places. That's our vision, our collective vision, and being part of the international body of Grace Communion International, and we are a part of it. If we are moving towards the goal of all kinds of churches, brethren, if we are, for all kinds of people, then the need to cultivate an environment of inclusion is no longer an option. It is a given. It is necessary. It is important. And if it is necessary, how can we at GCI grow towards a culture of grace? and inclusion. That's the challenge for all of us. And uh, I know, brethren, that it is easier said than done. Especially so if you reflect on a culture of, um, you know, worldwide church of God. Hindi po masyadong inclusive yung worldwide church of God. And I say that not as an item of, you know, putting down, because I've been a part of it. I know and I can appreciate it even more how much grace we have received from God. Because it was a journey. It was a journey. He did not cut us off. He was patient. At the same time, and the time was right. And because of our, our openness, our willingness, our humility, He said, I'm going to move you into a different direction. Because God loves everyone, we in the church should not exclude anyone. Where did this come from, brethren? Um, meron pong verse sa Acts chapter 15, verse 19. Si Apostle James po ang nagsabi niya, It is my judgment, it is my judgment that we should not make it difficult for other people to come to Christ. Mahaba po kasi yung Acts 15, 1 to 19. Hindi ko na po babasahin, but I'll refer to that in the course of my message so that you'll see uh, what that really means. But I'll give you the context. No, I'll give you the context so that we can see what was happening. It was James who said that. Not Peter, not Paul. Although Paul was the one who, who saw himself as the minister to the Gentiles. It was James, no? It was James. Where did he say that? When? Did he say that? It was during the most important meeting, council of the early church, no? Because of a controversy that happened between Paul and Barnabas and uh, because of the, what other people were saying. You know, it was during the time that Gentiles were responding to God. They were believing the gospel. But, you know, during that time, it was primarily a Jewish sect. Yung pong uh, karamihan po doon, Jewish sect. Eh kung pong ano, kung pong uh, meron pong Gentiles, teka mo na, problema ito. The issue was, will we remain as a Jewish church? Or will we include the Gentiles? Yan, ang pinaka pong malaki pong ano, napaka mind-boggling po sa kanila. Ngayon, we can, you know, we can look at the past and say, praise God that we, even if we're Gentiles, we are part of this church. It was no longer an issue anymore. But during that time, it was a big issue. Kaya nga po, dun sa panahon na yun, 
nagkaroon ng, you know, controversy yung mga Jewish, Christians, Christiano na po yun, nasaan yan, dapat yung mga, ano, yung mga Gentiles, well, we don't like the Gentiles, we don't like other people, as far as we are concerned, civilization is just made up of two people, tens of people, one is the Jews and the other is all others. Nasa ano po ako, nasa trip po ako, I think it was in Dubai na And I got to notice one lady who has a child and who has a lot of uh, bagahe, no? And it was on the park. And I tried to help her, kasi kawawa naman, nangangahulog yung mga, ano niya, tinuluan ko siya. Then, uh, during that short time, uh, I was able to to connect with her a little bit. Sabi ko, where are you going? Sabi niya, sa so UK. Ah, okay. And it's a nice place. I've been there a few times. Tapos niya, and uh, one of those, sabi niya, Anong naman na gustuhan mo doon? Ay, yung isang story doon, yung Oxford. Oxford. Sabi niya, ah, yeah, maganda yan. Sa Oxford University. I also got to Cambridge. Uh, my family also got to Cambridge. Ah, uh, Cambridge, I don't, I don't. Hindi nga rin matandaan. Because for me, as far as the universities in UK are concerned, there's only Oxford and all the rest of all the others. Saka sa tumawa. Tumawa sa kaya. And that's it. Sometimes people take pride in being exclusive. Kaya nga po sa Rotary, na tanda ko rin minsan. Sabi nga nun, as far as Rotary is concerned, our desire is to be able to to accommodate different professional uh, people. Uh, yung iba-ibang disciplines, ganyan. Pagka sumobra na tanda namin ng abogado or doktor or what, we don't really need those people, we throw them to the lions. We put on the lions club then, so we throw them to the lions. And uh, that projects, you know, sense of whatever it is, pride, differentiation, and uh, exclusion. So during that time, the main issue was not just about, are we going to accept the Gentiles? They were willing to, uh, uh, unless, sabi niya, ah, Pwede, pero they have to be circumcised. They have to be circumcised. Eh, siyempre, sa mga Gentiles, hindi nila masyadong concern yung circumcision. Siguro, kapag ka sinabi mo, kailangan pa circumcised ka muna, ano? Ayaw mo nga. Masakit yun. And they were, you know, mature people, they don't want babies. And I have a confession to make. I... Natuli po ako na when I was in the elementary. I know how it feels. Isang linggo, ganyan ang lakad mo. Kaya pagka meron kayo nakita ganyan lumakad, palagay ko... Naging kristyano na yun. Ha? <laughs> I mean, hindi lang yung process that some part of your body is severed from you, but, you know, every day you have to nurse the wound, and, and it's so inconvenient. Kaya sabi ng mga Gentiles, ayaw ko nga, wala ko lang pakat, kailangan pa ba yan? Sabi ni Paul, wag na. Tapos sasabihin ko, wala ka. Hindi nagkaroon ng debate ko yan. Ganun po, it is my judgment. After hearing all of those asides, James, who was the brother of Jesus, he was the one who, who said, it was my judgment that we should not make it difficult for others to come to the faith. Yun po yung issue at that time uh, that we can see there in verse 19. So it was this whole, okay, hindi na kailangan yan. But you know what? It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy, especially at the, at the first time, no? Hindi lang yung tinanggap ko na, sige, hindi na kailangan yan. But, you know, the cultural divide, the social divide that permeated over the years, it wasn't easy to, to remove. But you know what? That decision caused a breakthrough in the early church because that opened the doors for Gentiles and everyone to be able to, to receive Jesus because of pure grace. Yun po ang nangyari noon. You know, during that time, nagkaroon po ng konting problema. Sometimes, when there is a problem, we get so adverse with it that we run away from it. But you know, even in this situation, you can see that even some challenges 
have some potential benefit the way that you you handle it the way that you are transformed from that experience sabi nga po nila the only difference between an obstacle and an opportunity is your attitude what is your attitude yes there's a problem here but what is God leading us to see that's the that's the the benefit there but it goes back to the question is it really difficult for other people to come to God because of certain things and even during that story you will see at least there are two possible reasons one is because of uh, uh, a different understanding of the gospel you know these Jewish Christians believe Jesus they had some things that they don't agree with Jesus but there were things that they are in agreement with they are they they agree to the resurrection things like that angels but ito po yung nangyayari pagka po yung gospel understanding mo iba. Because if the gospel that you know is a gospel of exclusion, kami lang ang people of God, mga ganyan, o kaya before you have to be a Christian, you'll have to go through this test na para kang nag, ano, nag-bar exam. Praise God, because we are not there anymore. But as I said, we thank God for the journey. Because it helped us to better realize what grace really means. And what opportunity is open because the doors have been opened to all people. So a different understanding of the gospel. Kaya nga po doon sa ano, uh, Acts 15, 11, and during the deliberation, they said, we believe that it is by grace that we are saved, just as they are. So bakit natin hihihwala yung sarili natin? It's really by grace then. It's really by grace for them as well. Kaya nga po sa Galatians, sabi po ni Paul, Galatians 3, 28, Well, there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's no slave or free. Lahat po, meron pong access sa God. It's open access. It's sometimes saddening, brethren, that uh, with the enormous love of Jesus and the life that He has poured upon everyone, that some people tend to limit others from receiving it. No? If there was any benefit to this conflict, it opened the way for others to see that all people matter to God. All people matter to God. Christianity, brethren, is about open access. That is the meaning of grace because God understands us. God understands that of our own, we cannot reconcile ourselves with God out of our own. We cannot, you know, be sanctified out of our own. We cannot be glorified. It's all about Him. It's all about grace. That is why he chose to come so that in coming down, he can on his own, not out of our own, on his own, he can reconcile us with God, he can sanctify us, and when the time is right, he can also glorify us and enjoy his love and communion forever, for eternity. That is grace. So depending on your understanding of the gospel, sometimes our upbringing, you tend to see God in a different way. And that will influence the way you treat others, the way you, you build on your culture. Ganun po ang mga factors na makakapagpabago. Ganun po akong isang story ah. Narinig na nagkukwento po kami na isang brethren. He has two daughters and they're quite grown up. Sabi niya, alam mo, itong mga bata na nakakatuan lumaki. Itong isa, lumaki sa rule of law. Ito'y isa, lumaki sa rule of power of grace. <laughs> Napakalaki ng pagkakali ba? And I would stop there. Napakalaki ng pagkakali ba? Yung isa laki sa palo yan. Yung isa laki sa pocket. That may a big difference. But the affirmation, the, the sense of a flowing, inclusive love that you can accept a person for who he is, and yet you love him so much that you would like him to grow towards the best possible person. So, once again, brethren, because God loves everyone, the church should not exclude anyone. I pray, brethren, that that's going to be more and more expressed in the culture of the church. So, why is it that some people find it difficult to come to God? Because of the people's uh, and, uh, 
understanding of the gospel, no? And so, hindi po nakatuon doon sa inclusive love ng God. Pangalawa pa, yung poor testimony of the gospel. Poor testimony of the gospel means that during that time, sabi nga niya, bakit natin i-impose dito sa kawang mga tao na ito? Eh tayo nga eh. Tagal-tagal natin. Hindi naman natin kaya na. Ba't natin kaya papakawa dito sa mga tao na ito? Kawawa naman sila. So, what, what, do, what do we see there? Double standards. Di ba ba? Gusto mong papigatan yung tao. Kahit na ikaw, hindi mo naman kaya. Double standards. It's a tremendous responsibility as well. Well, it's a privilege, but a tremendous responsibility to be a Christian. Because what you do, what you say, where you are, speaks a lot about what you believe. Nakaka-sober po yun, nakaka-humble. Kaya po kahit na napakalapun kong privilegio, hindi po nawawala yun. So nakita po natin doon, nag-delute po yung gospel, at uh, medyo nabahiran po dahil doon sa uh, the way that uh, people live. No? Yan po double standards. Uh, how do we develop or how do we cultivate a culture of inclusion brethren, in the future? No? Hindi ko po sinasabi na ngayon, wala po yan. And then later in the message, I will say a few things more about that. But at least I'd like to share with you three dimensions of that kind of culture. What do you mean by culture of inclusion? What is it? What does it mean? How does it show? Patlupong elements yan, no? How does it look like? Number one, it's a culture of connectivity. Culture of connectivity. And by that, I do not mean globe or smart or uh, yung smart grow, yung, yung Facebook. Hindi po yan. Ibig sabihin. Hindi po yan. Ibig sabihin. I refer to the orientation of being in tune with God, connected to the vine, so to speak. Yung pong connectedness natin sa Kanya. It is our posture of being able to rest in the love of God. Alam naman po natin yan. Narinig na rin natin kay Pastor Hill. Yan ang dyan yan. Ang challenge lang natin, hindi po natin ma-experience sa buhay natin kasi hindi natin appropriate sa, sa mga sarili nating buhay. The problem is how, how we enter into that because of some other things. Let us bear this always in mind, brethren, that it is God's role to change hearts, including our hearts. Importante po yun. The love that overflows in our lives depends upon how much connected we are to the source of that inclusive love. If you, uh, if we can even imagine or or dream of or pray for a culture of inclusion happening in our church, and this is one basic foundational criteria for being able to enjoy that culture of connectivity. Yung po naka naka connect po tayo sa source because it's about the overflow of inclusive love of God towards other people, reaching out to other people. Kaya e kung punto yung tayo, dahil naka disconnect tayo jam. Ama gayari po nyan. You cannot really give what you don't have. Right? Matuto yung po tayo. Hindi po na that limits. That limits. The, the, the possibility that we can be as inclusive as we are. Ngayon po, yung culture of connectivity also is the, the orientation that instead of just us so that we can supply other people's need for love, lalo na po sa mga kapastoran, sa mga leaders, kahit na po sa mga brethren, it is the orientation that sana po Gamitin tayo ng Panginoon upang lalo po mas maraming tao makakonek sa Kanya. Hindi po ba? Amen po ba doon? Amen. Bakit? Kasi po kung tayo, parang nagiging masyadong center sa atin, eh para tayo yung ano, extension cord. Ayun yung ano, yung pinaggagaling yung extension cord. Eh yung extension cord, di ba? Tatlo, apat. Tapat lang ang kakakonekta doon. Eh kung marami na, no, kahit saan pwede ka pumonekta. Eh kahit na limandaan, daanim na rin, kitundaan tao. Pwede makakonekta. At the same time, wala pong problema. Hindi masusurt yung extension cord mo. Ganun ba? That's God's design. To, to be able to point the people to the source of love. Acceptance, inclusion. Lalo na po pagka meron tayong nakakausap na medyo may konti problema. Well, it's, it's, it's possible we can help them, pero... Maganda yung 
at the end of the, the dialogue, alalaanan mo lang, kapatid, mayroon isang taong siya ang solusyon niya, mga bagay niya. Hindi ako yan. Siya yan. Ganun. And then, hindi yung tipo, mga kapatid, the more people are connected to the source, but they are not only able to to, to overflow with that kind of love, they are also able to experience that love. At the same time. At the same time. Kaya po dito, mga kapatid, dito po sa atin, para po natin ma-plug yun. Kaya po ito, special worship celebrations like this. Why are we doing this? Is it because of uh, adherence to certain uh, old covenant laws in people? But we value the intent, the spirit of what comes uh, out when people get together to worship God, that God is able to minister to them together, they are able to minister to each other. Alam po ninyo, kahit na po ako po nang sasalita dito, kahit na po kahapon, yung po music, yung po sermon, kahit na po ngayon, yung po pagka nakikita namin kayo, nakikita ko si, si Sir Jose. I mean, napaka, nakakalaki po ng post po yan. Lahat. And that is God ministering to us. Hopefully, you feel that way also. Hopefully. That's the reason why we also promote yung po opportunities by which we can help people to get into those uh, postures of enjoying quiet time with God, yung mga nagdadasal tayo. Those are not responsibilities or duties. Kailangan ikaw magdasal ka. Kailangan gawin mo ito. Eh, papano? Ilang minuto dapat? Oh, then you get into the details. But you know, entering to the rest of God is a daily, moment by moment experience with God in whatever place you are. Of course, there are certain times of the day, like in the time that you wake up, those are good times because you're still focused. You still have the energy. Di ka pa anto, no? Pero I mean, every moment is an opportunity for you to see where the wind of the Spirit is flowing, uh, blowing. Sundan mo, Lord, sino? Kaya ang um, gusto mong pausapin ko ngayon. That is a dialogue with God. It becomes very personal. No? Kaya po tayo, dito po sa ano na banggit po kanina doon sa video, we are intentional in Grace Communion International. We can develop this discipleship pathway. That is a facilitative process by which the people can get to experience the love of God and His purpose for that, those people that they can grow into to the fullness of the plan of God for their lives. Yan po mga, ano, ano po yan, mga retreats, mga SEPs. I commend our pastors, leaders for promoting this kind of orientation. And it's going to continue. We are going to, to preserve that because we realize the value of those things. So, paano po yung connectivity? Plug into God. Then if it's necessary, we simplify our lives. You know, when you get too tired, what happens to you? Simplify your life. What happens to you when a person gets tired, you tend to spend in work. Good morning. What's so good about the morning? Ganun pa na. Tinanong yan, time choice na pumunta sa sana sa immigration siya sa dami ng tao. What's so good about the morning? Well, the sun rose up very well. You were able to come here safely and things like that. What happens to you become inward and it diminishes the opportunity for God to work in your life so that you can reach out to all kinds of people in all kinds of places, whether work or school, your family, everywhere, including the janitor. Okay, leave some space so that you yourself first can enjoy the rest that God provides. Enjoy the love that God provides in your life so that you too can be able to overflow, overflow that kind of love to other people. Kaya, simplify our lives. What is really valuable to us? Are we happy about our prayer life, our devotional life? Yung pong isang dialogue namin, isang brethren, na recently sabi niya, Sir, ako po, I have a confession to me, kahit na po yung prayer life ko, alos hindi ko na po magawa. Dati po nagagawa namin yung buong pamilya pa. Pero ayaw ko po, sumobra po yan, tandaan ng mga bagay sa buhay ko. Pag-ising mo, yun, na-stress ka na, hindi ka pa nakapag-uumpisa. Uh, simplify your, our lives. I know it's not easy. I'm saying that. But I'm a victim to that as well. Lahat tayo, challenge mo natin yan. Kaya itong festival na ito, if indeed, 
Which is is going to cultivate a, an atmosphere, a culture of inclusion. It's something that we can choose to, to surrender our lives to. In what way can we simplify our lives so that we can enjoy the rest of God? So, pangalawa po, aside from the culture of connectivity, is the culture of sensitivity. Culture of sensitivity is not about, you know, masyado pa naging balat sibuyas or what, no? Hindi po yan. In fact, when you think of inclusion, it may require that medyo kakapal po po yung konti yung mukha natin. Bakit ka? Kasi when you, when you uh, promote that, when that's your orientation, you become more understanding, more patient to other people. Relationship is dynamic. It's based on trust, it's based on dialogue, time spent together, lahat po yan. And when you go through that, there's a risk that you'll be vulnerable to her. Diba? That you can be vulnerable to her. Iba-iba po ano? Iba-iba po klase ng personality. Merong iba, talkative. Yung iba naman, sa tahimik lang. E paano kung kausap mo yung talkative? And so, pakinggan mo. Pakinggan mo na ako mag yun. Ano yan? Do you like that person? Yeah. And show that you can. And it shows by the way that we deal with other people, the way that we focus on their needs. And your sensitivity is about our openness so that we can anticipate the needs of other people. Going beyond our personal preferences and interests. Kung itong tao na ito, Gentile, ikaw Jew, medyo see how you can understand the dynamics of life being a Gentile. Ganun din, kung yung isa, Jew, ah, uh, ang sabi, masyadong tigalistik itong tao na ito. Ayaw ko yan. It's true, brethren, that there are some people that we may not like very well. And it's also true that there are people who do not like us. The people who do not like me. Pero, God, says that we love everyone. We should not make it difficult for anyone to come to the Lord. If that is what, is what it takes, then by God's grace, by God's grace, we can project a culture of sensitivity to other people. You point some verse that we can use in John. It's John. Uh, nasa John chapter 4. Mala, ma, mahaba din po yan. But it's about the story when Jesus was on his way and he got tired and uh, you know during that uh, time that he sat by the well and it was getting to be during lunch time and meron po isang babae na pumunta raw yung mga disciples bumili ng pagkain uh, dumating yung babae kukuha ng tubig and sabi niya ano, kung alam mo lang kung sino yung ano makakapagbigay sa iyo ng tubig na hindi ka na makukuhaw o pihingin mo yun then it got to be you know, and think about that story, brethren. Number one, he's a woman. He's a Samaritan. Samaritans don't like the Jews. And the Jews don't like the Samaritans. But he was breaking the rules. He was breaking the rules at that time. Kinausap niya. Not to put her down, because especially here, him, alam niya kung sino itong babae na tingko them. Diniktik na na ng diniktik. Hindi niya po ginawa yun. He had to, he had the openness, the heart, to be able to transcend the mga rules of the society at that time so that he can reach out to this lady who happened to be, you know, a question of questionable reputation. Woman, Samaritan, sinner. Dinanang po. Sino po yan? Katulad din po natin. Katulad din po natin. He loved us while we were powerless, while we were no strangers. He loved us anyway. Kaya po yung John 4, napaka-sabbering po. Example, paano magkaroon ng culture of inclusion, the orientation that you can address people's needs, culture of uh, sensitivity, being able to speak in love, in address niya rin yun. Meron mga bagay na kailangan marinig ng tao, pero hindi niya kinondem yung babae. Pero sinabi niya pa rin, speaking the truth in love so that eventually at the end of the day or the end of the story, na-transform po yung babae. And because of that, dumami pa yung mga tao. 
na nakakakilala na kang kilala kay Kristo dahil po sa experience na yan. Just one event, you underestimate the value, the power of, of that particular example. Tayo po. Binibigyan po tayo ng chance ng Panginoon upang maging ganun din. Marami rin po tayo na mimit. Dati, because we have uh, been into the culture of exclusion, may sakal na po yung mga tao na iba, iba po yung paningin natin. Well, get out of here, my people. Ganun tayo. Ngayon po, nag-iba. Go out to them, my people. Naging priori ng Pilisa kasi sa pag-ibig ng Panginoon. Not because I'm not saying that we are going to, you know, identify with their sins, hindi po. But to be able to love them anyway, in a way that is going to reflect the love of, love, uh, the love of God. A culture of uh, sensitivity. Kailangan po lumabas tayo sa comfort zones natin kasi hindi po may madali yan. Hindi po madali. Setting aside prejudices, biases against people, hindi po madali yan. And it can remain stuck with us. Kasi po, kahit na po tayo sa community, iba-ibang pong personality, iba-ibang pinanggalingan, let's start with the household of faith. Then the more this culture develops and is parang na, ano ba, naging na-concretize, na magkasano, ano, ganun po siya, kami yan, nag-develop, na-concretize. Then, when the people get to experience that, those who don't even know the church, they'll say, I'd like to, to know more about Jesus. I don't want to know more about your church. Then you can just say, well, I thought you'd never ask. God is good, brethren. He has allowed us to experience it first, in ourselves, how connect, uh, how sensitive he has been. Such that alam niya, hindi tayo makakarating sa kanya, siya ang bumaba. Not esteeming his rights to be equal with God, but for the sake of compassion, he went down so that he can reach out to us, to the lowest sinner. So, culture of sensitivity, Recognize that, you know, whoever a person is, is a child of God. God loves that person. That matters to God. So, that will be our orientation. Sometimes, our problem in promoting relationship is, uh, when we have to speak, lalo na po tayo mga Pilipino, or we go around the bus sometimes, di ba? We can speak, but not in love. Or we can claim that we love and we don't speak. And dapat po yung pareho po na yun, uh, magkasama po yun. Culture of sensitivity to other people's needs. Para po po, culture of proactivity. Proactivity. That's the, the antonym of that is reactivity. Nagre-react ka lang po ano yung, ano sa environment mo, nagre-react ka. But a proactive person thinks in advance. What is the person going to need? Kaya po, sa circles po ng iba, they may talk about it as customer service. Ano ang pwedeng kailangan itong taong na ito? Isusupply ko. Agad, hindi niya pa tinatanong. And with more, with more reason, because when we are overflowing with the love of God, when we are connected to the love of God, eh, ma magiging proactive po tayo. Proactivity suggests also action. Hindi po tayo passive. Kaya po dito sa church, kahit na po ito, forward together in God's mission, God has called us to an active life. An active, but it's not a striving kind of life where we have to, to earn our relationship with Him. Hindi po. But it's an exciting life because there is action that is calculated so that you can also enjoy rest in Christ. Meron activity, pero hindi ka mabubor. I mean, meron sense of yung space, pero hindi ka mabubor kasi maraming pwedeng gawin. Yun po ang ibig ko sabihin. And it's an a positive outlook to the future, proactive. Ano ba yung mga needs sa community? Ano ba yung mga kailangan ng mga tao? And over the last 20 years, nagbago na po ang kultura. Yung po mga problema ng 20 years ago at saka ngayon, hindi na po pareho. How do we deal with those people? How do we deal with more single moms? How do we deal with the students who get pregnant in the schools? Yung po mga ganyan. Yung po mga drug addicts. Hindi po masyadong problema 20 years ago when I was... Teen, ah, uh, hindi na ako, hindi ako teen age. <laughs> but, you know, 
Let me give a poem situation, but the, the message remains the same. And more powerfully, more clearly, sa church po natin, para pong ulang na lang po isigaw. God loves everybody. And because God loves everybody, we will not exclude anybody. That's a commitment of GCI. And it's something that I like us to, to consider, take seriously. Because it is consistent with the inclusive love of God. And it's something consistent with the mission of God to reconcile all people unto Himself. And He can, He has given us a chance at GCI to participate in what He's doing. Doon kong sa MD conference at saka sa international conference, marami po ako namin ng mga iba-ibang pasin tao. In all six continents, meron po representation ng GCI. May late man tayo, but at least we are spread all over the world in six continents. Meron po tayo mga kapatid dyan. And I cannot help but praise God for the things that He is doing even in greater ways. Nakakatunga po. Makita mo kung ang papano yung nami-minister mga iba-ibang uh, churches natin sa iba-ibang lugar. Tapos, one of those times was when I was speaking with uh, Mr. Dennis Richards from uh, New Zealand. Sabi niya, Eugene, meron akong problema. Oh, what's the problem? Sabi niya, doon sa New Zealand, sa, I think Wellington, meron isang grupo ng Pilipino doon. And I like to consult with him so I can help them. Kasi siyempre, hindi ko sila, yun, hindi naman sa Pilipino, no? But I really want to help them. And I praise God for what they're doing. Kasi doon sa lugar nila, doon sa medyo, hindi naman bundok, but it's kind of remote, sabi nga. There are about 25 to 30 people who are meeting there regularly for Bible studies. Ang Pilipino, karamihan, doon, nagtatrabaho sa farm, sa ano. And I'm excited. Kanya na, hindi ko alam ko pa paano kong tulungan. Sinabi ko kay Tom yun. Sa talbo. Sabi ko, Tom, pakisabihin mo nga kay Ruth. Tsaka kay Manny, that first of all, we praise God for what they're doing. Secondly, in whatever way that we can help, sabihin niya. And it was communicated to Mr. Dennis that, you know, as a consequence of that, in October, they will be meeting together. Magkikita po sila. Doon, sa New Zealand. Ang katawa po, God is good. Napakabuti po ng Panginoon at marami pa po yan. And this is the time that I may share with you some of the things that blesses me personally, even the things that I remember. Kahapon po meron tayong ano, mga acknowledgement ng mga pastor. Pagka po nakikita natin yan, lahat po yan are representations of individual ministries na nakakatuwa. Imagine, kumukha lang po ng payatas the poorest place on earth. <laughs> in the Philippines. Hindi ko alam kung meron sila. But, you know, how are they able to feed a hundred children? Almost every day. Tapos pagka ano sila, I mean, you will be blessed. Mga outreach natin sa Pinyan, sa Kalamba, sa Alayahan. I mean, yung mga DBBS, ang tarosa, yung mga napakarami po. Kung makikita lamang po natin yan, mabubusog yung puso mo, lalaking puso mo. Praise God. We have a church like this. Kaya lang po sinasabi ko na, you know, uh, yun po mga bagay na representation lamang po yan. Marami pa po sa buong Pilipinas na nangyayari na ganyan. Hindi ko po masabi lang dahil kulang po yung panahon. Ganun din po yung sa overseas work. Sa North Korea, how we are being led by God and sa, sa, sa China. Andito po si Michael Wang. Uh, ni Hao, where's Michael? Uh, siya po isa doon sa ministerial training intern. So that hopefully if he gets more pastoral education when he gets back to China, is he may be able to, to participate in what God is doing there better. Siya lamang po ay isa. Hopefully po next year meron pa lang naman po mga iba. Pupunta rito tapos makakabalik po sa kanila for a, a lifetime of ministry opportunities in, in China. Ganun po yun. Andyan din po si Roshan. Uh, hopefully po, uh, pagka po nag-graduate na siya, meron din pong opportunities. Kaya ganun po yun. Yung po proactivity is an open, expectant attitude. Kamukha po sa John 4, uh, sabi ng mga disciples, kumain ka muna, Ros. Sabi niya, I have food. Ano yung food mo? Sino pa kaya sa'yo? Yung babae na yun? Ano 
and for this to do the will of my Father in heaven. Look! Napakarami! Ang harvest! Kaya hamayo tayo. That is what gives him sustenance. I'm not saying that you don't, you don't eat. Meron po tayo mga ano, tickets mamaya. <laughs> Libre po, okay lang po yan. But I'm saying is that nakafocus po yan. Proactive. Nakikita niya yan. Napakaraming opportunities. But the laborers are few. Tayo po sa GCI, napanalahin ko na sa pagdaan po ng panahon, lalo po natin makita kung ano po direksyon ang ginagawa ng Panginoon sa atin. At uh, paano po makapagpapabago sa buhay ng mga tao, hindi pa po natin kilala. Kaya dito po sa point na ito, I'd like to pose a few questions to you. Reflection questions. Number one is, as we reflect on connectivity, sensitivity, and proactivity, Number one is, how happy are you with your prayer life, your, your devotional life, your quiet time with God? Are you still enjoying it? If you're not so happy about it, then, then maybe this is some, plan, some time where you can you know, pray to God for, for His leading so that uh, you can move towards that direction because that is strategic to how you, He can use you to be able to reach out to other people, even in your prayer life, even in your testimony. Meron pa mga bagay na nagagawa natin na nakapagpapadali o nakapagpapahirap para sa mga tao upang dumulog sila sa Panginoon. Meron ba? I don't know. Nobody is perfect, mga kapatid. Wala. Lahat tayo. Uh, meron tayo mga portion na basak yung pat natin. No? Pero, I mean, we, we, we acknowledge that. But, at the same time, we don't stop there because God does not stop in transforming us. Plus, not stop in transforming our church. Patuloy po niya tayong ginagabaya. O, pamakita yun. What is it that is in our lives, in our testimony that may make it difficult for other people or easy for other people? There are some of the things that you do which you may not even realize, but it can bless other people. Nung po nasa Dubai ako, one time, sumakay po ako ng trend. Siyempre, maraming po sumasakay sa trail, ganyan. At uh, during that time, I saw one. I saw one lady who was sitting there. Malayo pa po yung stasyon na bababa niya. And uh, the train ride, maraming po nagbabasa. Kasi wala ka magawa. Nagbabasa siya. And I noticed that what she was reading was a Bible. He didn't speak. He didn't stand there. Mga ka, mga, you know. Mga kapatid, wala naman sa sinabi. Nagbabasa lang po siya doon. Parang devotional life niya yun. And even if he did, she did not preach a sermon during that time, even her example was a silent testimony. He was not ashamed of her Savior. He was not ashamed of you. She was a Christian. And I just smiled. Well, I said, praise God. Praise God. How about us? How about us? The days will come when we, whether we know it or not, people are watching us. How is it to become a Christian? I look at this guy. Meron po ba? At nakita po natin ngayon, mga kapatid, na meron po mga elemento na many of us may have taken that for a long time. Pero po ngayon, I invite you, brethren, as we reflect on the beauty of our communion with God and with each other, to reflect on the beauty of these elements. Ito pong mga elemento na ito ay nagpapatunay past, present, and future that we are safe in the hands of God because of His love we are integrated into His life in-explain na po na, na napakaganda po ni Pastor Hilian kahapon I mean, these are precious symbols that reflect who we are our culture the love that flows in us and the love that flows to us from Jesus when we look at these elements, mga kapatid, we remember the past. We remember the time when Jesus, when He took the bread and wine, He was inaugurating the new covenant that explains or that shows powerfully that all people matter to God and His sacrifice is for not for some people, but for all people. When we reflect on the present, we eat this together. Kaya po mamaya, pagka po ano, uh, pagka po na pag ko, uh, kinuha po natin will be aided by our ushers. We will eat the bread together. We will drink the wine together. Yun po ang gagawin po natin, mga kapatid. And we look to the future. 
kasi po ito, mga elemento na ito is not just about the past, about the present, but it helps us to look forward to the future. But as you do this, as often as you do, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. So, is GCI still looking forward to the resurrection, the coming back of Jesus? Yes! And this are the elements that prove that we do. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, napakabuti po ng Panginoon at dito po sa time na ito, gusto ko po kayong imitahan na we can reflect on this together. And I'd like to share with you a scripture that comes from John 17, 6 to 12. This is about the time when Jesus is about to suffer. He said, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Seven, now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew him uh, with certainty that I come from you and they believe that you sent me. Ito po yung prayer niya. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world. What he was just saying that he was praying at that particular moment for them. And those people that are going to, to receive them. I'm, not, uh, I'm praying for them. Uh, all I have is yours and all, all you have is mine and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them from the power of your, by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are. That's communion, brethren. It's not just about teamwork, not just about you know, worshiping together, but enjoying a deep personal relationship with God and the Father. 1 Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the uh, new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. That is what we are going to do, brethren. We ask, we reflect on the things that we've heard during these last three days. As we reflect on the beautiful elements that are before us, may it transcend our hearts and will give us a deeper appreciation for the love that flows from God to all of us, brethren. In the past, we have been through uh, a relatively exclusive culture. But if we truly embrace the vision of an inclusive culture in our church, can you imagine what impact that will be for us and for the world? Being Brown in her book, Daring Greatly, she said, that we as humans need two basic things to thrive. To be connected to each other and to feel that we belong. God is placing us, GCI, into a great opportunity ever to participate with God in making people realize that God loves them. Because God loves everyone, we in the church will not exclude anyone. We pray that as we move forward, the people in our churches will own and invest themselves toward a more inclusive church. We are convinced that people need to grow and experience that love of God. And through Jesus, through His Word, through His Church, through His grace and power, will we be willing to be the church for all kinds of people, in all kinds of places? Will we be that church? 
we will not make it difficult for others to come to God. And by God's grace, as we move towards a culture of connectivity, sensitivity, and proactivity, we can see the amazing, the vast, transforming power of God's inclusive love all over the earth. Brethren, our incredible journey continues. Moving forward together. We will move and we will move together. And together commit ourselves to God's mission of bringing all people to Himself. Even experientially, He is leading us to develop this culture of grace. And it's going to be seen by all. Brethren, why do we have to move forward in this direction? The answer is clear. And the reason is compelling. Because God loves everybody. And because God loves everyone, GCI and our pastors, our members and their families will not exclude anyone. Can we pray towards that, brethren? Let us not remember the words of James, the leader in the early church, as we see that salvation is for the Gentiles as well. They matter to God as well. It is my judgment, he said, that we will not make it difficult for these Gentiles to come to God. By God's grace, let us be that church. And let that be our culture. Let that be our life. And we will prepare our churches by His grace so that we can receive, love, serve all kinds of people from all kinds of places in all our churches. And these many years we have received grace from God. Amazing grace. And like us, may all of those people, may all of those people also experience that indeed God loves them unconditionally, accepts them warmly, and included them securely in Jesus Christ. And by God's grace, they would not ignore Him. They will come to Him, and they will believe. That, brethren, is our way forward. That is God's mission. We are participating in. Let us pray. Father in heaven, our great God, you have extremely blessed us. And so, only with the physical things that will help us to survive every day of our lives, to enjoy some of the comforts that our society, our work, our families have to offer. But we appreciate and we praise you so much for the tremendous love that we have received in you through and in Jesus Christ. We can experience our deep communion with you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, we ask for your blessing. We pray that even as we move forward from this day, from this year, towards the 52nd year of our church, may you bless our lives, our families, and our churches so that we can express, we can progressively grow in your inclusive love towards all people in all places. Thank you so much, Lord, for this incredible grace that we receive from you in Jesus Christ. And all of this, we pray in the name of and by the authority of your loving Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.